All right, welcome to MacBook Lessons on Facebook. This is a lesson a day made easy for you. And we'll be doing one lesson a day to share with you so that you don't have to uh, take a lot of time out of your schedule to learn about your MacBook. Today we're going to start with my favorite uh, item on the MacBook, and that is the system preferences. You can actually find the system preferences in two different places. The first place is up here under the Apple, and this is the place that I recommend that you get used to going because under the Apple, you'll see it right here, it never goes away. The Apple is always up here, and System Preferences is, al is always right inside. Again, there's another place that's down here, and it is the gears symbol that is on the dock. Now, I want to show you real quick, when I move my mouse away, the dock goes away, but if I actually hover over the bottom of my screen, my, mouse, my dock comes back. If you'd like your mouse to disappear, your dock to disappear like that, if you come over by this line right here and you right click, which I'll teach you right click in just a minute if you don't know how, but right click on there and you can actually turn hiding off and then when I move away it doesn't disappear. I'll do it again and I'm going to turn hiding on and now it disappears whenever I move away from it. So here's the system preferences folder. We're going to go ahead and open it up and get started. You'll notice in the System Preferences folder we have your personal setup right here. This is where you do your password and screen savers and all that. We have the hardware, the internet and wireless if you are needing to set up your wireless, the system right here, and then anything other that you may load on here may show up in this folder right here. Today we're going to actually start specifically with the trackpad because I think that's the most important thing that you need to know when getting started with your MacBook. So the trackpad, we'll go ahead and click on it. You'll notice when we click on it, it takes us to a new menu. Now, if I accidentally click on the right, wrong thing, I can click Show All right at the top, and you'll notice I'm right back where we started again. So let's go to trackpad. In trackpad, we actually have three different tabs. The first one is point and click, and you'll notice there are several different items on this page. You'll see on the right hand side you're looking at basically a tutorial. And the tutorial is of the item that's highlighted. So if I move down over the next one, it starts a tutorial for that one. And if I move over this one, it starts a new tutorial. The cool thing is, you'll notice this one has a drop down menu. So if I change that, it actually starts a tutorial for what I changed it to. So it actually shows you every single thing that you can do on your trackpad right here in the trackpad in System Preferences. So the tap and click is a quick way to um, you know change pictures like it's showing you right there. Uh, second, secondary click. Some people, this is the right click, secondary click. They don't call it right click, which is fine. If you're a PC user, you may know that secondary click is uh, a right click. So you're going to click in the bottom right corner and it's only one finger, as you'll notice. However, a lot of times if you do click in the bottom right corner and you have tap to click, if you have both of them on, you'll sometimes hit the right click when you only meant to tap. So those are some things that you're probably going to notice with your settings right here. I actually like the two finger click. I've gotten very used to two fingers and if with the two finger click, if I had the tap to click on, it wouldn't uh, fight with itself basically. The look up here, so if you wanted to look something up specifically, you can tap with three fingers and find a word in your dictionary. And the three finger drag will actually move the item around the screen. Now here you'll notice the tracking speed. This is a nice way to slow down your mouse if it's moving too fast. And I know a lot of people are pretty sensitive with that, so you can actually slow it down a lot or speed it up a lot. The next one is scroll to zoom. In scroll to zoom, you actually have the option of having a natural scroll, which is the same as your phone. If you have an, an iOS phone or a Droid phone, usually your scroll is the natural version. So if you push up, the screen goes up. However, you'll notice on here that you have another option, which if I click off of that, when I pull down, the screen goes up. And that is more like a PC style. So if you're used to that, that would be an uncheck right here. Zoom in and out of pictures, smart zoom if you want to, like on your phone, zoom into a paragraph or something on a website, you can have smart zoom on and it'll, 
It'll zoom right into that paragraph and make it fit in your whole screen. You can also rotate with your finger, two fingers. However, you can turn that off and you can still click on the button to rotate the item to right click on it. So, more gestures is the next one. There's swipe between pages. I really like this because it'll take you back a couple websites or if you click on the wrong link, it'll take you back to the page before. Or if you have to go back to get some information, you can swipe right back to the one you were on. So that's really nice. You have the swipe between full screen apps. So if you, you there's a little button in the top corner of your program. It's the top right corner and it's a double-sided arrow. And if you click on that, your actual program will fill, fill the whole screen. So if it's filling the whole screen and you have multiple of them open like that, you can actually swipe between the multiple screens without having to make that uh, click back on the menu bar at the top and make that smaller again. It's really, it's a nice feature. And once you get used to using that fill the full screen view, you're, you'll like this feature. It is something that comes with time though. The notification center. So the cool thing about the newest version of the notification center is you actually can see the Facebook and Twitter accounts. If you have them loaded in your settings, they'll show up on the notification center. Mission control. Very cool. I'm going to show it to you right now. Mission control actually allows you to see additional desktops. So if you like working in different screens, uh, if you're a person who enjoys spreading out, this is a nice way to spread out on the MacBook. You can hover over this corner and you'll see a plus sign, and that plus sign will give you an additional screen. You can change the desktop on each one to be different, which is really nice. When, when you hover over it, I mean when you click on it, I'm sorry, it'll open up, but I can push back up with those three fingers again, and I can go back to the original screen I was on. If I don't like the screen I'm on, or if I don't like the desktop, I can actually just click on it and get rid of it, which is pretty nice. So I'll do three fingers down, because that's what my setting is. You can also change it to be swipe up with three fingers or swipe up with four fingers. I have App Expose, which allows me to, I have it turned off right now, but it allows me to see all the screens in case you have multiple screens on here. I only have one on, so you can't see it. But if I had three or four windows open, it'll give me a view of all of them. The launch pad actually is a pretty cool thing. The launch pad will give me all the different programs that I have on my computer. And I can two finger swipe to the left to see the additional programs I have. Now to get back, I just do the swipe out, the pinch thumb and three fingers out, and it'll give me the main screen again. And the last one is show the desktop. Show the desktop is really nice when you have lost a file behind all those windows that are open. So remember that that's there, get used to that. And it's really fun if you spend about five, 10 minutes just doing all the different finger gestures and trying to figure out what all is set to begin with. And it gives you a better idea of what you wanna change in this trackpad settings. So I'm gonna go back to show all. Again, that was trackpad that we talked about tonight. I hope that you enjoyed this short lesson and I look forward to giving you some more information tomorrow. Thank you for visiting.